What's up, y'all? It's your boy Darren S. The Yale, and I just jumped off the porch with Dirty Glove Bastard. Let's get it. Homies, I started at the bottom in the mud with No, I ain't budget. Been one day I hit sex up in public and it won't fuck up my budget. Um all right, so we got the one and only Darian STL yes, jumping sir. off the porch with us today. Welcome, yes, man. Sir. Pleasure to be here, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem, man. How you feeling today, too? Man, I feel great, man. I'm in Atlanta, you know. I'm from St. Louis, so just being able to come out here and, and, and get the vibe with y'all, exchange our energies, man, it's just dope to be here, man. I'm blessed. Nah, Can't absolutely, really complain. man. Good show, man. Welcome, bro. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. And hey, you want to shout out your people sitting back there with you today, uh, too? I got my bro right here. Uh, I got my bro, King James. Um, uh, he basically, like, pretty crazy, like, I think it was like a couple, it was like almost a year or two ago. Yeah, when I first met you, when I first met you, it was like a year or two ago. Yeah, so it was it was back in the day when um I came out to Atlanta with, uh, there was another manager at the time. I'm not going to say his name or anything. I don't want to put him on blast or anything like that. But there was another manager we came down here with. And I was with my, uh, I was with my homegirl Carly at the time. And uh, basically, um, they had like a little run where they like, you know, when they tell all the artists, we're like, oh, we're going to go to this show, we're going to do this show, we're going to do this show. And when we came down here initially, he was like, nah, don't, uh, don't bring your own car. You want everybody to ride together. I told my homegirl, Carly, I'm like, nah, we need to bring the whip because we need to be able to make our own moves because I don't want to be stuck to nobody uh, agenda or, or criteria for the day. I want to be able, if we need to, if something ain't working, we need to go be able to move, you know what I mean? So I, I had to, I, was, I convinced her to bring the car. And uh, we drove down here to the A. We were doing things, and things were going good. It wasn't bad necessarily, but we went to a hookah bar, and we were about to do the show, and it was just dead. Nobody was there. It was, it, it was a, it was a, you know, whatever type of little showcase that was going to be like. This ain't going to benefit nobody. So I was on Instagram, and I remember seeing. Uh, I was following Lil Bankhead at the time, and Lil Bankhead posted some about a uh, showcase, uh, people can come perform, and Quavo Badass was gonna be there, who, was, who I knew was a part of the Boosie crew and everything, cause I've been following and already been tapped in. So I was like, Carly, we need to go here, right? So we drove down there, and mind you, this, it was in the trenches. Like, it was, it was I, where was it? It was in the trenches though, like, like it looked like, but you could tell, like you could just tell the energy, but like, you know, I don't care. Like we was I'm like, we're gonna pull up, we're gonna we're gonna rock that show. So we walk in there, me and Carly like, you know, sticking out like a motherfucker. We walk up in there <laughs> and I walk right up to DJ, but I'm like, how do we perform? And uh and I think that you you were in you were you weren't the DJ, but you were like in that you were hosting. Yeah, you was hosting. So he was the host. And uh and basically I ended up getting up on stage. I ended up meeting me and Quavo, meeting all these people, James, BZ McCarty, Tank, uh, I met Tank that night as well. And um, I ended up getting cool with all these people. And that's the first time I met him. And uh, yeah, yeah, and, and that's the first time I met him. And, um, and we, uh, long story short, ended up getting hella cool with him off of that, killed the show. And um, came back out here next month to do an Ugly Money podcast. Not the podcast, but he had a show, a summit. He did mm -hmm. an Ugly Money summit. I came back out here to do it. Ended up already knowing everybody because the weeks prior, we'd already met everybody off the footwork we had already did. Ran back into James and BZ and them. Got cool with them, started playing the game with them, right? I started playing Warzone with them. Now, let me tell you, James, this dude right here, so he, he, he the DJ at Rap City ATL. Super connected, like, he, 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 he cold, but on Warzone, let me tell you. <laughs> Let me tell you on Warzone, this man be dead. He be begging like, hey, where you at? I'm down. I'm like, bro, like, like he just big DJ, but on Warzone, he be... no, nah, bro. This is not cap. This is on my soul, bro. Like this dude be down. He be 20 buildings away. He be like, damn, bro, what you doing over there? But long story <laughs> short, we started from started from me being like, we have to go to this event. We have to meet these people. And then me and this dude end up becoming really good friends, play the game almost every day with each other, and we help each other in any way that we can. He's a super dope producer, uh, uh, super dope uh, DJ out here for Rap City ATL, and um, just good people, man. He, like, he got good energy. He's, he's always showing me love. He's always connecting me with people. So every time I come to the A, I always got tapped in with James, man, every single time. So much love to him. No, that's love right there for sure, man. Mm -hmm. All right, so St. Louis, man. Yeah. Let's talk about your upbringing and everything uh, uh -huh. in St. Louis, man. Uh, so, you know, my dad did music uh, originally. And um, because he did music, I basically grew up in a musical household. 
Um, music was all that we did growing up. My dad used to go to the bars, Soulard, and things like that to perform. Um, that's how we made our money because he, he actually didn't have too much money. We were really like more lower income based, but all his money was made from music. So when I would used to go to the bars with him, I started getting on the stages with him around the age of two years old, four years old. And um, that basically like jumped me into a musical career of my own from a very young age. And my dad kind of brought me up like on some Joe Jackson type of thing to where it was rehearsing every day, music every day. I had to, I remember when I used to come home, I used to have to rehearse before I even did uh, homework. Like he would make me do my music first. And um, you know, he brought me up on a real Motown background. So I grew up singing like Aretha Franklin, Tina Turner, Jackie Wilson. Um, we had did the Apollo, blah, blah, blah. But all that music really kept me because St. Louis in itself is such a, St. Louis is such a, what's the way to put it? I ain't gonna say just a negative city, but the mentality in St. Louis is so expected to be a certain way. Everybody around you just expects you to just kind of normally do certain things and music kept me away from all of that. I was always singing, started singing, went more into rap as I got older, but I was always in music, 100% dedicated to music. And just, uh, my, my dad really instilled that into me at a very young age. So, you know, my upbringing in St. Louis really just revolved around music in itself. Okay. You know? Yeah, and there's videos of you online, like performing, I don't know how old you are, but you look yeah. pretty young. At yeah, these, nah, uh, uh, I was, uh, like I said, I was performing since the age of four in front of crowds. But um, most of the videos you see, like I was like I was at the Apollo when I was 11. Uh, I did uh, I did so much. Like like my whole childhood is literally just a big rehearsal. You know what I'm saying? Like my dad really did not let me do nothing else. I couldn't go out and play with friends. Or none of that. Like he would get highly upset if anything happened to my voice. I had to not talk too much, none of that. Like, I had to be ready for the next show because that's how we were That's how we were paying the bills, you know? So, like, I was like almost, I was almost like expected to help pay the bills off of my voice and off of my talent. Yeah. But my dad taught me everything though, you know what I'm saying? It was, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't even be in music at all, I don't think. Hmm. And now, were you enjoying doing this? Or oh was, yeah, yeah, Or did yeah, it feel yeah. like you were being forced to doing this shit? As a kid, I feel like as a kid, any kid that's put in that situation, I feel like eventually you're gonna be like, damn, I wanna go skate. You know, I had skateboards and stuff. I did like skating, you know, but I couldn't go skate too much. So I used to wanna go skate, couldn't go do it. I used to wanna go with my friends, go to big parties, I couldn't go do it. Which is also another reason why I think I'm so much in music and not doing what other people be doing in St. Louis. And I'm not down in the bash and nobody, you know, in St. Louis, like wherever you grow up, whatever, you know, people's lives, you know, whatever path they, they get exposed to them ain't like necessarily like bashing nobody, but I'm grateful that I was kept on a path to deter me from that, you know what I'm saying? Because I feel like my mentality and even my soul is a little bit older when I look at the world today, you know what I'm saying? And it's like I say, ain't no bashing nobody, nothing like that, but, but if music saved my life in many ways, you know what I mean? I dig it, man. So, and yeah. when did you switch over to actually start rapping then too? So, uh, I went to a city school, so I was always like singing, but I always wanted to rap. Like ever since even elementary school, people used to always be like, oh, that's Eminem. Or, you know, however the white rappers transcended, is it your Eminem, your Paul Wall, your MGK, your Justin Bieber. I was every white rapper, singer in the book to everybody else. But I always was rapping Ever since Eminem was rapping, they used to be like, oh, that's Lil Eminem, go ahead, spit something, blah, blah, blah. And I, I would realize that even though I could sing, people wanted me to rap too. You know, like everybody was like, like people just liked rap, you know what I'm saying? People just like hip hop and they like hearing bars, you know what I'm saying? So when I was younger, I would always rap in school. As I got older, once I hit the age of 14, I stepped away from doing the stuff with my dad, uh, doing the uh, Motown records and old school records. And I said, Dad, I want to do my own thing. I want to go do R&B, I want to do hip hop. And, uh, and I actually met with a producer, a shout out to this guy named Swift, a really good producer. He was like my 40 back in the day. Me and him were like a duo. He kind of like coached me on how to like record in the studio, take my takes, my, my stabs and all that extra, you know what I'm saying? And uh, 
And we really just, from there, I continue to grow into my own artist and learn how to mix my uh, rap and singing into one thing, you know okay. what I mean? So, yeah. And were you dropping music back then too? Yeah, yeah, Okay. Yeah. I've been dropping music since. I mean, my first CD technically was with my dad. Okay. And I was 11. Oh, shit. And it was, a, it was a Motown cover album. It was called, I don't even want to say what it was called. It, it, it's a little embarrassing. It's called Darian Saffron and the Soul Sensations. Uh, you know, you know, you know how them old people always got the name and then, and the duh, that he got me, bro, yeah. Yeah, so I was Darian Saffron and the Soul Sensations. But, you know, it was like all, it was all Motown, you know? And then as I got older, like I said, 14, me and Swift was dropping mixtapes. And, you know, like, I was really like, you know, the funny thing is, it's through all this time as I learned to like progress in music and rapping and singing, uh, I was always telling people, no matter who was invested into the situation, they was always like, oh, you need to just sing. You need to just sing, like in the beginning. And I would always tell them, I'm like, no, nah, I think that people are gonna start rapping and singing. You can't be a rapper and sing. That's, you, you know, back in the day, that was like, that was unheard of. You can't rap and sing, you can only be one. Then Drake come out. And I look at them, I'm like, I told you, like, why couldn't we have been doing this? And then they'd be like, okay, okay. And then I'd be like, well, I want to start rapping and singing like this. Oh, you, you can't do that. That's too much like this. And, and mind you, the people that was always like over me, because I'd always been tied to somebody, rather it's, a, rather it's a deal. I was in deals from the age of like 14 to 25. Different okay. deals of different managers and labels that's like, hold on, hold on, no, do it like this, don't do that. Or, you know, and all love to them because they just want to see their investment come back. I get it. But at the same time, me being a kid, me being youthful, I'm like, y'all wrong. Y'all, that, that's not what we're doing right now. The world is moving at this pace and y'all still on a whole different frequency. Y'all think it's like this and it's really like this. And I just remember time after time, I was like, we should do this. They held it up and somebody would come out doing it and it would blow, the, it would blow up. And I'd just be like, you know, but it's all love because all of that, all of that experience really was nothing but uh, preparing me for now. You okay. know, now that I look back at it, I don't, I don't regret nothing. You know, everything is great. Yeah, you ended up signing with Strange when you were what, just 18? Uh, I wasn't 18, I think I was 20. Okay. 20 or 21, but I did sign with Strange. Um, at the time, I was, uh, I was actually homeless. Oh, sure. So uh, I was just ready, I, I didn't care. I was like, whatever they offered me, I took it and I rolled with it, but True. yeah. Really? Yeah. Shout out to Tech. Shout out to Trav. Much love to them. Uh, they, even though we had our differences, and I know the, the the fans of Strange Music that know my story with them, from the outside looking in, might have seemed like I might have been ungrateful with the situation. I just, I really just stayed and believed. Like I said, I always had a vision, and I was always like, we need to do this, and everybody was always like, no, do this. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, I just really bet on myself with that whole situation. So. But yeah, I was, I was signed around the age of 20. Okay. Mm -hmm. Was it at least enough to get you to where, like, you weren't homeless anymore at the time? It was enough to get me to where I wasn't homeless. Yeah. Just enough. Sure. Oh, sure. <laughs> Just enough. I'm, you know, it, I was young, and I, was very, I wasn't very uh, business-minded yet, yeah. you know? But at the time, anything that was getting me off, because I, I was sleeping at the Metro bench on Delmore. Oh, wow. You know, I, I, I didn't really have, and I had a baby on the way. So, with shout out to my daughter, you know, I, she would be right here if she went to school. I'm I surprised promise. she didn't pop man, up. Man, yeah, yeah, I, I wanted I saw to. Saw famous animal. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I wanted to bring her. You know, usually she right on my hip, but I didn't want to take her out of school. So, understood, you know, man. Yeah. yeah. So, how much did you learn about the, you know, the music business side while being signed at that time? So, what's crazy is my dad during his time, um, he actually had a platinum selling album um he still has millions of views on youtube to this day but the reason why he was broke at the end of all of it number one the manager ran off with all the money from two different labels they he took a whole bunch of money from the signing bonuses and they ended up getting dropped but on top of that he didn't own any of his publishing That's right true. so i was already a little bit going into any contractual agreement with anybody a little bit like okay but let me see what's going on at the time, though, like I said, I was homeless. I couldn't, I didn't really have a position to be like, no, let me get my lawyer. But, you know, I was already like, well, what does this look like? What is the publishing looking like? What are the percentages? What I learned from being in a label for that long, especially like 
a legitimate, like a real deal and actually have money put behind me in a, in a push is that neither the artist or the label is wrong. Neither one of y'all wrong. The artist is sensitive about what they want to put out. Mm. The label is a business and they're looking at it as an investment. They want to make sure that what they're doing comes back. The artist is looking at it more personal and you never should, you should never mix personal and business. But that's where you as an artist in the company have to make sure that y'all on the same terms. Y'all got the same mind state, the same, uh, y'all got the same agenda of what y'all doing. Y'all got a clear understanding, hey, this is where we going, this is the direction we gonna move, and this is the overall goal, you know? Because if that's not understood, the whole thing gonna derail, yeah. you know? And you wanna treat business like a marriage. You know, you wouldn't want to get in bed with nobody that you don't really like, you trust them and, 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 and care about them. Like, you know that that's somebody good for you, got, the, got your best interest. You know what I'm saying? Not saying that Strange didn't have my best interest, but in general, you don't want to get in, you don't want to do business with people, especially when you sign a song. Yeah. You got to make sure that y'all right in the same mind state. No, absolutely. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. So how long were you signed to them? Was it a, a big battle to get out the deal or was it pretty seamless? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hey, uh, so um, I would say that the end of my strange days <laughs> ended in a very abrupt, I was very young and immature in how I handled it, I could say that. I definitely went straight to the internet like, they not letting me drop none, they woo woo woo, hey, because the thing is, is, see, Travis is really respected by everybody in the label. Like people respect him to a certain extent, and he and he 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 runs shit with a with a strong iron fist. You know, Travis has a strong iron fist. Me being from St. Louis, I don't give a fuck. I'm like ready to go. I'm like, man, look, I said woo woo woo, and he like what woo woo woo, and we would go back and forth. But like I said, like that just ended up making the whole process way more drawn out than it needed to be. Way more. I, I ain't gonna lie, I probably sat way longer because there's probably a lot of people that wouldn't even come close to touching, even messing with me. You know what I'm saying? Because they're like, nah, I heard that you, you know, I can't do that because Strange got you on papers and I can't, yeah. I can't really even mess with you. So there's so many people that was like, I wanna, I wanna put you over here and do this, but legally I can't even mess with you. So I just sit there like, man, go back on the internet. Man, they not letting me, and now people can't work with me. It didn't matter though, because it's not like, I just didn't have enough power. I didn't have enough, I, I didn't have enough power to really do anything, you know what I'm saying? So artists, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't do that, you know so what I'm saying? If you you have to, how long did you have to sit then before you finally- That's the thing though, that's the thing. So, okay, when I was with Strange, I was getting my little $800 a month per, per diem. I was basically being taken care of just enough to where I was able to live, but I had to make a bet on myself to say, okay, if I, because basically it was like, stop doing what you want to do or we're just going to shelf you, right? And not word by word, but basically in terms, that's what it came down to. Either you do what we tell you to do and you listen to how we want to push you or you just going to sit there and you ain't going to be able to do nothing, like basically. So my stubborn ass was like, all right, and, and I'm still. So I basically let them take away the money, kept trying to do my own thing, went back homeless because me and my baby mama at the time had fell out. She wouldn't leave the crib. They got me evicted. When I got evicted, I couldn't get another crib without having five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 to put down. So then I ended up going, living with my godparents for a minute still. And everything I was doing because I was a independent artist and because nobody would watch my daughter but me, I had to sell features because I couldn't get a nine to five job. So I was just selling my features to all the strange music artists. I was like, boom, 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 trying to sell my peaches, trying to make it go through. And then my godparents died. Baby mama was in LA messing with some drug dealer or something like that. I don't know what she was doing. Then I had to go, go to the extended stay because that's the only place we could stay. $2,400 every two weeks because, you know what I'm saying? So that's like where we was at. That's when I wrote Motivation, you know, but I never sat. I never stopped. I was constantly like, boom, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep dropping. I'm gonna keep doing this, keep doing that. So I couldn't say that I really sat, but I was held up. But I never sat. I never stopped. I was continuously learning, continuously figuring out different ways. Okay, if I put it out like this, 
uh, it, it don't get too many numbers. But if I do this to market it first, if I market it, that's really, that, to be honest, this whole situation taught me, okay, as much as I love music, fuck the music. That's what that whole situation taught me. Cause I'm over here like, damn, my music's so good. What do I, what do I need to do? And really, and that's another thing I learned that was an opinion. My music's so good is an opinion. Some people might not like your music. And then that also comes down to marketing. You gotta market people to like your music. But then I sat down and I learned, I was like, okay, boom. It's not the music they tapping onto, it's the marketing. It's not the song they like, it's the headline. It's not this, it's that. So just that little bit of time, me sitting down, or not sitting down, but me being held back, forced me to learn like, okay, what is the business? And I'm more grateful for that because I, I don't wanna be an artist now. Now I wanna be, I wanna be, I wanna be, a movement. See what I'm saying? I wanna be, I wanna be somebody, you look at Darian, you like, nah, he a brand. That's a business. Everything he do, like he has merchandising, he has like like everything just set up in a way to where it's 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 a monopoly. You know what I'm saying? This is a game. This has nothing to do with your music. And I would have never known that if I would have just stayed with the label and stayed as a worker. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like I never really was a worker. You know what I'm saying? So would you be open with signing with another label in the future, or are you is that? Now listen, when it comes to that, I'm not. I'm not a. I don't think that I hate when I hate when artists be like, "Oh, stay independent." You dumb if you sign to a label, because it it depends. It depends. Me learning, like I said, me sitting there learning that, it's like, okay, hold on now. What money are you putting up? How much are you expecting back? What are all these? What are all the variables of this contract? Let's really understand this contract and say, does it make sense? How many albums do you want? How many years do you want? How many terms? You know, does this make sense? Because right now, if I market myself correctly, if I get on enough blog sites and have enough push and have enough this, I know that I can get the pool, I can get the eyes, I can get the views, I can get people to be on my, come over to my page, and then I can, because personally, I have plans to not even have to use Spotify, not even have to use streaming platforms. I create your own, you create your own platform. Create your own, have your own way of money, the same way Call of Duty got. The same way Call of Duty got something where you gotta buy Call of Duty points to buy that album. You come to my city, you have to buy Darien points to buy your, to buy a CD, to stream a CD, to get merch. And oh, you wanna get this album and that? Yeah, that, that album's only $10, but the, to get the Call of Duty points, you're gonna need to get the $20 bundle in order to get it, so then you're gonna spend more over here, just like Call But you can do things like that if you, if you had the platform to do it. Mm -hmm. We, with the internet, we had the way to do so much. So if a label came to me, and said, this is what we want to do. OK, well, let's make it make sense. You know what I'm saying? Because I've already put a good ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 in marketing. And I already know why you hitting me up. Because you wouldn't be hitting me up if I didn't market myself already. So now that I did that push, what are you going to pull for me? So no, I'm it. always open. We can talk business. Yeah. Let's talk business. But let's, let, just, let's make it make sense. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. We're currently in the dropping a hundred songs right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. Talk about boat. this idea that you had before you, you know, started rolling these out. All right. So basically, I was sitting there and I was like, "Damn, I keep dropping music. They fucking with it, but it's not going nowhere for real." So I'm like, "Okay, let's give them an incentive. If y'all like my music like that, I'm giving y'all a hundred songs. If I'm not owned by a hundred, I'm retiring. Now, mind you." People, people be like, no, you can't quit after 100. You got to keep going. You got to keep going. I'm like, bro, 100 songs is a lot of songs, bro. Do y'all realize how much 100? I don't even think Michael Jackson has put out 100 songs. I don't think Michael Jackson got 100 songs out. No, nah, I don't think Probably he do. Not, yeah. That's a lot of songs, bro. So for me, but still, it gives people an incentive. So right now, we on 20. And on top of that, another thing I said is uh, my feature price is raising with that as well. So every 10, increment of 10, it goes up $100 in my feature price. So it, 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 it gives people a reason to say, oh, he just dropped another one. I want to share it because I want to see, like, I'm, they, they tapped into this game. They invested into something. Now, if I blow up, I'm going to just be like, well, I'm on now, you know, 100 songs, whatever. You know, we're going to fall back. But that was my idea with it. I was like, OK, I'm dropping 100 songs. Y'all come to my page. Go ahead, look through them. We got a lot of songs, we got a lot of material. And then people are like, you can't drop 100 songs. I do. I've done, when I was doing features to, to like pay for everything that was going on, I was doing like 20 features a month. That's oh, it. <laughs> yeah, so not no cocky shit though. Like yeah. I'm humble, but yeah, like 100 songs ain't nothing to do. So this isn't 100 songs you sitting on. You, you're freshly recording these. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Most, now now there, there do be some times where I pull one back that yeah. I feel like if there's anybody new, because I, I also believe like 
to, you know, we try some, maybe somebody didn't hear your stuff. Try to repost that song, you know? There'll be some songs that I'll redo, but mostly, yeah, we, we all fresh. Okay. You know and talk about the one you performed on Famous Animal, man. Mmm, that one. Uh, so, you know, the funny thing is, is when I made that song, I wrote it to be performed on Famous Animal. For real. I wrote it with the anticipation that I was like, okay, I'm going to write a song, I'm going to make my daughter a little part, we're going to go up there, and this is going to be what we do. Mostly because it was more about marketing to be like, I, want, I wanted people to see me and respect me. And I do feel like, unfortunately, a lot of people prejudge me before they hear anything about me. They'll look at me and think, oh, this dude is a wannabe. This dude just, he, people don't know what my intention with music really is. I'm not, I, I don't do, like, I'm from St. Louis, as we have been saying. And while I love my city, I sit and I watch, because I come from older music as well, I sit and I watch the morality of music and the agenda of music, and the frequency of music, and where it is going. And I feel like us as people have lost the side of empathy and love and, and things that we really don't show no more. And like, it's lame to do that. And while it's all, like, I get it, like, we'll turn up. I'm all good with being ratchet. Like, I'm ratchet as hell. I ain't gonna say I ain't I'm ratchet than a motherfucker. Like, I'm super ratchet, that's cool. We could be ratchet, we could turn up. But when everything becomes, like, if you look at, but these kids running around with guns like Jordans now. Like, we used to be like, when the newest Jordan come out? They like, when the newest gun come out? They literally rapping about their guns and that's it. And in my city, for real, for real, like, that's all they rap about. What gun they got, what clip they got, what ammunition bullet they got, what type of, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, I wanted to do the famous animal to set me up for discussion of a first impression to say, damn, but I respect him though. So I wanna hear what he has to say next. And then maybe if I'm put in position to be able to change things a certain way, I have enough respect to where my word can actually move people. One of the biggest reasons why I didn't wanna do the type of music that most of these labels wanted me to do, they wanted to make me Justin Bieber because I can sing. I can bring pop singing vocals, right? And while I'm still gonna do that, I still plan on once I get established, I still plan on going and doing some pop and doing some music that can be like, oh, you know, like, you know what I'm saying, do all that. We can do that because I, I love that music too. But I know damn well that Justin Bieber came out and was like, let's talk about prison reform. You ain't gonna listen to what Justin Bieber got to say about no damn prison reform. You know what I'm saying? You're not gonna listen to what Justin Bieber got to say about the child support system. You're not gonna listen to what Justin Bieber got to say about, hey, we need to, Y'all need to stop. Justin Bieber can't tell nobody in the hood what to do. And this is what you should do. And I'm not one to say that, oh, Darian SDL is, is, is super ghetto, or I was born in the trenches, I was out here with, I, I wasn't. But I sat here and I seen all my homies live a life of something like almost lost. And I couldn't even tell them nothing because you so, you believe it is this so much. You can't tell them nothing. So all I, and I said this from the, from the day one, like when it comes to music, I don't want the money. I don't care about the fame. I want my music to change the world. I've said that from the jump. So whatever I got to do, because I know that I can't just come out here and be like, oh, let's change the world, guys. That's lame. But I can get cool with y'all. We, we turn up, boom, 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 and then I can throw in, hey, by the way, you don't got to kill people to be cool. You know that, right? All right, let's turn up. You feel me? That's what I want to do. And, I, and I, what, I, I'm going to do it. I promise. I'm going to do it. No, I feel that, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what do your fans mean to you, man? Man, uh, they mean everything to me. You know? Uh, the, fact that, uh, the fact that anybody supports me enough to sit there and, uh, you know, help me, help me in the movement that I'm trying to do, then you're a part of the movement. And that's, that's, that means the world to me. You know what I'm saying? You help put food on my daughter's plate. That mean the world to me, you know? Yeah. All right, so would you say you got more female fans or male fans at this point? Man, you know, Darren got the girls, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, I'm a singer. I started a singer, so, yeah, I definitely say I got more female fans, for sure. And you be replying back to them in the DMs and all that? Man, no, bro. I don't even be talking to these girls for real like that, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, you, you just did me last night and said, you should let me eat that ass. 
Is this him? I think this is him. This you? Who the hell are you here? This you? So you don't eat ass? Where's you? You don't eat ass? Yes or no? You don't eat ass? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yeah. Yeah. Yes yeah, man, listen. Hey, man, look, man, not, who let her in here, man? What the fuck? Man, fuck, no. Nah. This is my interview. Who the fuck let? Man, no. Nah. No, I don't even know her. On my mama, I don't know her. On my mama, I don't know who that is. I don't even know who that is on me. Matter of fact, no, nah, fuck this. I gotta go, because y'all y'all on some hot shit. Y'all on some hot shit. I'm out this bitch. Anyway. Back to the music. Yeah, back to the music. What should we expect from these last 80 songs, then, man? The last 80 songs, man, so... You know, we gonna hit a, we gonna hit a little bit of everything. We gonna turn up a little bit. We gonna we gonna do more. But just just understand, when you come to Darian music, you never gonna get that. I'm, Darian don't talk about killing people. Darian don't talk about you know what I'm saying robbing people. But we gonna talk about we can talk about getting money. We can talk about loving girls and things like that, and loving each other. And we can turn up. But overall, you don't, whenever you come to Darian music, you gonna get something out of that every time you come. That's what I can promise you. Uh, speak on fatherhood. How much has this changed your life uh, these past few years? Man, I want to, to be honest with you, being a father made me realize why I'm hurt. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it gave me more purpose in general, you know. Uh, that, she became my whole world. You know, once I became a father, that was everything. I feel that, yeah, especially a girl. It's definitely going to change Man, your life. Man, bro, I'm so scared. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so scared. She already like feisty like me, so I'm I'm scared, bro. So they say your kids gonna be three times worse than you, man. I hope not, bro. Cause I know I I boy, we just gonna yeah, we gonna let that we gonna let that sit. I I hope I, if she is, I know it's gonna be amazing. You know what I'm saying? If she three times worse than me, it's gonna be three times more amazing. I know that. So. I feel that. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and plug your social media so everyone know where to follow you. Right. This is your boy Darian Estl. Try to look at this one. This is your boy Darian Estl. You can find me at Darian Estl on Instagram. That's D A R R E I N S T L. Do I say I'm jumping out the porch, too? No, we do that at the end. Okay, okay, okay. We're not done, man. Oh, well, we're about to be done. But okay, okay, my bad. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. Okay. All right. You got any shout outs you want to give before we wrap it up here? Um. Shout out to my daughter. Shout out to Strange Music, Tech, Tech and Trav. Uh, shout out to James back here, BZ, and you know, anybody in general that has helped me move forward in my life and get me to this point right now, and to any fans that helped me move forward and get to a further point. I appreciate all y'all and I love y'all, man. With the same homies, I started at the bottom in the mud with No, I ain't budget. Been one day I hit sex up in public and it won't fuck up my budget. On my home.